talked about our uh, social life in in, in in material society mm -hmm. and uh, our interactions with uh, other uh, non devotees. Uh, how should we behave uh, at this um, junior stage or first of all? Very good question. У меня вопрос о жизни преданных в материальном мире. Как вообще на уровне конечно начинающих жить в материальном мире, как действовать в нем? So, when Raghunath Das Goswami was young and when he was first uh, engaged in his spiritual practice before he became mature. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him that Antare Karanista Bhaya Loka Vyabaha Atirati Krishna Tomai Koribe Uda that outwardly you should behave just like a general person in society. But that means not a, a regular person in modern society. No, drinking and smoking and watching TV all the time. No. But it means in interactions with people. <coughs> Just to follow Loka Vyavaha, the customs of the of the people without transgressing dharma. And it internally cultivates one's nishta, faith and steadiness in devotional service. But we associate with the non-devotees only as much as necessary. <laughs> so, yes, it's best to be kept in the, to the very minimum. Rupa Goswami, he said, I would rather be uh, kept in a cage and put in fire or put in the um, water with crocodiles and sharks than associate with a non-devotee. But for, unless is, one is doing a nirjan bhajan, staying alone, uh, everyone will have to at some point associate with non-devotees. So here Sangha, association, is only called association when it's done with attachment. Но нужно понимать, что обществом санга называется только то общество, к которому мы привязаны сердечно. So if a person has to interact with a non-devotee to some degree, but it's done without attachment for that person in a detached way, then it's not considered to be actual санга. И если приходится общаться с непреданными, но не привязываться к этому всем сердцем, не вовлекаться в это глубоко, то это не будет обществом непреданных асад сангой. And uh, but and likewise, if one associates with the sadhu but has no attachment for that sadhu, you're also not associating with him. Right. Mosquito is also associating with the sadhu but just drinking his blood. So this is why in Upadesh Amrita, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad said, Tadati Pratikranati Goyamakita Pratiti Bhumte Bhojayate Chava Sarvida Priti Lakshanam. There are six symptoms of uh, affection between devotees. Uh, um, that means giving some gift and receiving a gift. 
and uh, opening one's heart in confidence and receiving confidential instruction. And uh, feeding, giving prasadam and taking the remnants of the Vaishnava. So, uh, by the exchange of, by these six loving exchanges with the Vaishnavas, there is a transference of Swarup Shakti, the Aprakrita Pran, the energy of Bhakti. But if we do these six exchanges with mature uh, persons, then there will be an exchange of the three gunas. So one should have a balanced vision. When you, when you see um, some person, a non-devotee, then no need to uh, scream and sprinkle Ganges water on them. <laughs> Or try to shave them or anything. <laughs> Just be, be normal. But we reserve we reserve the attachment of our heart only for Guru and the pure devotees. Sometimes you may have to associate with family members because there are some traditional functions. So just by being very respectful and, uh, and very helpful and good character, it will be very good preaching. They will say, oh, this bhakti is uh, very good. How my family members become so wonderful. И когда мы общаемся с родственниками, нужно быть просто очень уважительным, смиренным, помогать их по мере сил, и тогда они посмотрят и скажут, о, что это с моим там сыном, мужем, женой произошло, какой у него приятный характер стал, наверное, бабки это действительно что-то замечательное, Changed completely, 180 degrees. And the more practical uh, side of it, you know, for example, we are, um, we are young and we, we want to go outside and uh, sit somewhere and uh, have a chat for, a, for an hour, but then we end up eating onion and garlic and drink a cup of coffee. Yes. And we feel guilty and then no. it's... Well, this is the thing. Я бы хотел еще попросить какие-то более практические вещи сказать, потому что когда мы выходим, общаемся с кем-то из друзей, например, сейчас где-то посидим, и они там делают что-то с чесноком, с луком, пьют кофе, я чувствую себя немножко некомфортно. But this is exactly what I just said. Но это то же самое, о чем я сказал. You go out, you meet a mature person, and then you engage in the six exchanges of affection. Yeah? They give you a cup of coffee, you give them a hamburger, <laughs> and then you have a chat which means then you start opening your heart to each other like this and then you get contaminated for you it's very difficult because you are only uh, one or two people in the whole country who are devotees <laughs> <laughs> uh, the devotees are lucky in Italy, in Russia, in Spain. They have so many friends that are all devotees. They come together, they all their social life is with the devotional and with each other. So, I appreciate uh, that you, it's uh, for you 
very difficult. So you see, we are sitting here and we are chanting. And if you are really uh, trying to take shelter of Nam Prabhu, then you cannot imagine how Nam Prabhu being Chintamani, transcendental wish fulfilling jewel, can transform your life completely. Everything that you need and all types of uh, experiences and uh, if you have some material desire they will be fulfilled in such a way also that you will give up that material desire. Mm -hmm and all your spiritual desires will be fulfilled also. So never become hopeless. Always know that Nam Prabhu is Chintamani. And if you are carefully chanting every day, Nam Prabhu will make miracles in your life. И никогда не нужно терять веру в Святое Имя, потому что Святое Имя — это Чинтамани, драгоценный камень, который исполняет все желания. Если мы очень искренне принимаем его прибежище, служим его, то он просто сделает из нашей жизни настоящую сказку. Chanting Hari Nam and doing service for Guru — these are our two best investments. Наша лучшая инвестиция — это воспевать Святое Имя и быть вовлеченным в Севу Гуру Дева. If we neglect the service of Guru and the chanting of the Holy Name, to try to take care of our uh, many worldly responsibilities, mm -hmm. then uh, we just become more and more entangled and in a lower consciousness. So have strong faith in the holy name and in service to Guru, and uh, you'll see all the other things they work themselves out. И нужно иметь главное очень сильную веру в служение Гуру Деву в Святое Имя, и тогда все необходимые вещи они сами придут. The lesson of Jalal Bhatt about this pastime no? between demon and devil, and we know that Narayan he only um, um, interacts with his devotees. You can say in the beginning, because he only interacts with the Swarup Shakti in their heart, because uh, the spiritual energy never uh, comes in uh, contact with the material energy. So, uh, but uh, he kills the demons. And they see him also, so but he is not interacting with them. So how, how can I? I will explain it? in the when, in the morning. That was my next point to speak to them. <laughs> <laughs> but in just in essence, you can say that when Supreme Lord appears in this world, then the um, uh, mature energy becomes the united with the shadow of the spiritual energy so that even those who are not transcendental but only sattva like the devatas and in tamas and rajas like the demons that everything that they do is under the control of the spiritual energy even though they themselves are in rajas and tamas because the spiritual energy is a manipulating the mature energy in the background in such a way that the supreme lord he is transcendental and everything he does and every interaction is also transcendental. Though the consciousness of the various personalities may not be transcendental. И вопрос был целом о том, что Господь взаимодействует только со своей сварупой шахте. И почему он взаимодействовал с демонами, когда он пришел в этот мир? Грудев расскажет об этом сегодня на утреннем классе. Но в целом это действительно так, что Господь взаимодействует только со Сварупа Шакти, но когда Он приходит в этот мир, то в Сварупа Шакти материальная энергия в соприкосновении с ней тоже преображается и приобретает качество Сварупа Шакти. So, uh, everything is a perfect, in, perfect in the Leela of the Lord. Though many of the personalities are under karma, during His Leela, then it is the, his spiritual energy is reconciling everything so that uh, everything 
and everything and every person in the Leela, even if they're in Maya, is uh, still perfect and according to the uh, uh, the perfection of that Leela. Mm -hmm. It's not like someone can come and sp and re and and, uh, and spoil the Leela because he was Tamasic. И в лилу Господа все все совершенно, никто не может просто прийти и испортить лилу Господа. То есть сварупа шакти Господа так влияет, что даже демоны становятся частью лилы Господа и его. So this lila of the churning of the ocean of milk is especially actually to illustrate this very point. That's what it's for. И эта лила повторение молочного океана, она для того, чтобы проиллюстрировать это. So we'll explain it this morning before. Я это объясню сегодня подробнее. Another question? Navita? Uh, very short question. When uh, we are doing this uh, parikrama or we are walking, these beggars that are on the, uh, on the street cities, we should give some donation or something or not? Когда мы совершаем парикраму, то очень много людей просят у нас что-то про нами, и мы должны им что-то давать или нет. First of all, there are thousands of them. Hundreds of thousands of them. So if you give even one rupee to everyone, then you'll be yourself a beggar. Но здесь в Тхаме тысячи таких попрошайк. Если мы дадим каждому хотя бы по одной рупе, то мы сами должны будем пойти по миру с протянутой рукой. So. Uh, the Vaishnavas are not uh, callous to the sufferings of the living beings. So, but uh, charity is also in the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. Но также благотворительность может быть в гуне благости и в гуне невежества. So charity which is given to a suitable person at a suitable time and a suitable charity uh, and given without any attachment is a charity in the mode of goodness. И благотворительность в гуне благости это та, которая дается достойным людям в достойное время и правильное пожертвование дается. So uh, you have to look at the situation. And see if you are going to help, uh, that you help within your means, and that uh, it's a, a worthy uh, uh, situation, worthy person, worthy recipient. Нужно подходящим давать, давать людям, нужно посмотреть, какой это человек, и давать пожертвования только ну, подходящим людям, которые действительно нуждаются в этом. But there are also so many professional beggars. Но здесь много профессиональных попрошаек. At Govind, and you can see them lying on the ground. They have horrible diseases and everything. This is a makeup. They wake up in the morning, they get some makeup, and they put it on like this, and then they go ah, like this. And so these are healthy people pretending to be uh, having some terrible disease to get more money. So you have to also use your discrimination. Нужно понимать, что иногда абсолютно здоровые здоровые люди, они притворяются такими вот больными, рисуют себе страшные раны. Нужно понимать это, различать такие людей. It's an, uh, it's not uh, compulsory to that uh, Vaishnavas uh, do the welfare work in the mode of goodness. Это uh, uh, и пожертвование Вайшнавам не сравнимо с uh, uh, благотворительностью в гуне благости. Like Bharat Maharaj, he saved the baby deer. Например, ну Бхарат Махарадж спас оленёнка. But then he became attached. Но он привязался. So by doing the uh, worldly karmas, one can also become attached. И если кто-то будет следовать мирской карме, то он тоже привяжется. But those are in uh, household life. It's part of their duty to support the 
the to help the poor people and do something for society also. No, это обязан обязанность в этом мире помогать помогать людям бедным и как-то поддерживать общество. So according to your discrimination, you can do something. И нужно учиться различать постепенно. The poor people, it's best to give prasada. Но бедным людям лучше давать просад. Because one they need food. Затем, потому что когда они почтят просад. To prasad them offer to the Lord will also give them spiritual benefit. И они получат духовное благо с укрытия. And if you give them money, they may spend it on cigarettes. Но если дадите им деньги, то они купят сигареты себе. Yes, Maharaj mentioned several days ago that if one uh, takes on the dhoti in the morning, I mean a uh, uh, prabhu, then he should think that he ta uh, takes on uh, like a skirt or a sari. But I think it is more like for very advanced um, devotees. I think if you can if, or if I would imagine, I can I put on this sari. And mm -hmm. I think this is not appropriate. It's, Can you say a few words about this? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, вопрос о тхоти и саре, как, uh, как что, что, что это значит? Да, да. Что 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 значит как надевать? Можете прокомментировать? It's not necessary uh, because we are seva sadak rupa ina sid rupa ina chatri. So we have a sadak form and siddha form. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is uh, performed by the siddha rup? And what is performed by the sadhak form is separate and different. У нас есть садхака рупа и сида рупа. И то, что мы совершаем в своей форме садака, оно отличается от того, что должны совершать в своей форме уже уже сварупы. And uh, one who is very deeply absorbed, he's getting dressed and everything. He's not even aware that he's doing it. И когда кто-то очень погружен в святое имя, в лилу Господа, он не думает уже о том, что он называется. Он не замечает, что он делает, он просто думает о Кришне. That maybe if he has some external awareness, that he just getting dressed may remind him of that. But it's not a sadhana. It's not a sadhana for a sadhak in a low level. Но для садака на очень ну низком еще уровне развития для конечки это не садно так вот одеваться и думать о Кришне. But he was just illustrating how the devotee was very advanced. Everything which is experiencing internally, it's naturally in connection with his internal absorption. Но преданные на высоких уровнях развития они все делают будучи погруженными в мысли о Господе. So don't, this is not uh, written in any list in the list of the angas of bhakti or sadhana. It's not. Это не написано в списке что такое сад списке саданы необходимого для саданы. Nico. The word lila um, is often translated as pastime, and I don't know pastime in the material world is something very different, I think, to what it means in this context. And uh, I, I, I wonder if you could uh, just explain this word a little bit. Generally, in English, the implication of the word pastime is something that a person does voluntarily for their uh, pleasure and for their happiness. You know, for example, working in a factory or coal mine, it, no one says this is a pastime. <laughs> for pastime is oh, I go fishing or whatever they do. It's something that it, so the word uh, pastime <coughs> is used uh, just to indicate whatever God does is of His own free will. It is voluntarily, and he does it out of joy, not because he's forced by any circumstances. This is the implication. Вопрос был о том, о слове лила. Лила переводится как пастайм, то есть, ну, мы переводим это как игра. Но лила и господа и материальные вот эти вот игры, какие-то деяния, они сильно отличаются друг от друга. Вроде говорит, что английское слово пастайм это значит что-то, что кто-либо делает по своей доброй воле для своего удовольствия, не потому что его кто-то заставляет это делать. То есть мы нельзя 
нельзя сказать, я совершаю лилу работы на фабрике или лилу разгрузки угля. Нет, можно сказать, что лила это там пойти рыбачить или, не знаю, на каток пойти, какие-то развлечения. По, по своей доброй воле, никто не заставляет, для удовольствия. So our acharyas who have uh, translated into English have used this word and uh, we accept that it's a good choice of word because they have wisdom. Ага, и Ачарья именно так перевели это слово на английский, Лила, как поставим, потому что они решили, что это самое подходящее значение. Они мудро поступили. But uh, at the same time, uh, just as the Christian theologian Thomas Aquinas, he said, when we speak about God or the activities of God using the words which relate, are generally used as vocabulary to describe our activities here, the words are never used in exactly the same sense, they're only analogous, it's an analogy. Томас Аквинский, по-моему, сказал, что когда мы используем слова нашего языка для того, чтобы описать деяния Господа, нужно понимать, что это просто аналогия, потому что здесь не может быть точного стопроцентного совпадения, просто у нас нет другого словаря. So, of course, all the pastimes of a general person, they're under the law of karma. И лилы обычных людей в этом миру — это просто влияние кармы. Они не вечные. И они не полны разы, там проблемы во всем материальном мире. Yes, so one has to learn uh, what is a lila tattva. Когда кто-то изучает, что такое лила татва? А, нужно изучать. Oh, some uh, devotees have arrived. You wanted to make an interview. Yes. Yes, and come, come and make your interview. Some devotees have come from the World Vaishnava Association. Преданные прибыли с из Всемирной Вашнавской Ассоциации. Это аудио-интервью, видео-интервью или видео-интервью? Yeah. So first of all, uh, we are doing this for the purpose of like what Dina was told. Mm. Um, after so much of difficulties and 90 years of debate between Hindus and Muslims, Sri Ram Mandir, the Janma Bhumi has been regained and the court has a, order has been passed. What do you think about this? And what's your opinion about this? It is uh, necessary for all human beings to live together in peace. But there are conflicts which are based on the ongoing historic circumstances that have to be reconciled before peace can come about. Because uh, there are communities have some grudge that this community did this a hundred years ago, but they did this a thousand years ago, and it goes on and on and on. So we have a situation here where the, um, the, the Islamic people of today, they are not responsible 
But their ancestors, hundreds of years ago, uh, invaded that place, Ayodhya, and uh, deliberately, as an act of aggression, built a big mosque on the, one of the main holy places of the Hindu faith. You see? So, many persons in the Islamic community say, actually, this is not reflective of our religion or our beliefs. Huh? In fact, uh, two days ago, I met with the chief imam of the whole of India. And uh, we discussed the importance of the, uh, all the religions of the world, religious leaders, coming together and uh, glorifying God, having kirtan. Because the glorification, the articulation, the vocalization of the praise of God is a central feature of all the religions of the world. And it purifies us. And uh, so uh, we will be making more programs together. I can give you a report on this as well, photographs, everything, uh, about the interreligious dialogue. Interreligious dialogue is extremely important. Do you know why? Because dialogue is a substitute for violence. If we don't talk, we will fight. Uh -huh. When we cannot talk with each other, that's when it becomes physical. So don't think the dialogue is uh, not important because the alternative is very dire and uh, has uh, terrible consequences for everyone. So dialogue is very important. And many persons in the Islamic community have said an injustice was done in the past which was not really in keeping with the peaceful precepts of the Islamic religion. And therefore, this situation has to be reconciled. Now someone say, may make a, an argument that actually this is a discrimination against the Islamic community to close their mosque or make them move somewhere else. But there's no discrimination whatsoever. It is only a question of um, fairness and uh, resolving the conflicts that were created by a previous generation. If we look at the history of the human race, then we can be ashamed to even be human beings. Yeah. So at least in this generation, we can look back at history and say, can we do better than what was done in the past in this regard? So reconciliation is necessary. And the reason why the closing of the mosque or its relocation to another place is completely fair is because if you go to Mecca, to Medina, to the main holy place of the Muslims, you will not find a temple of Lord Ram there. Mm -hmm. So if they want to keep their mosque in Ayodhya, uh, we can agree, if they agree, to build a big temple of Lord Ram in their holy place also. <laughs> of course they will not agree, and even we don't want it. We don't want it. Uh, but uh, a, culture, a culture means the shared world view of a group of people within the uh, boundaries of a particular area. If within one area all the worldviews are piled together, no one is sharing anything, then you've actually destroyed culture. So cultures need uh, some space hmm, to, to manifest itself. And so um, the, uh, it is not um, a fanatical or anti-Islamic conclusion to um, uh, to reclaim the, the sanctity of the holy place of Ayodhya uh, in accordance with its original history and the culture of the people there. And actually, it's a great opportunity. If the Islamic community accept this, they say, oh, as a gesture of reconciliation for the past wrongs, we will peacefully relocate to another area which is perhaps more connected with our history and not so much uh, imposing upon your history, then that will be like, as we say, extending an olive branch of peace uh, to the world. And it will very much um, uplift the image and the acceptance of Islamic culture for those who are from other cultures. So this is actually a good opportunity uh, to promote. It's not an opportunity for a conflict. It can be, but it, it's also an opportunity for reconciliation, forgiveness, and to make a paradigm 
a model how similar conflicts can be resolved in the future. So this is good for everyone. Thank you very much. And the second thing is about our Yamuna rivers. No? Yes. So Yamuna is one of the holiest rivers in the of the followers of Sanatana Dharma and its current situation is practically dead. Like yes. everyone knows after yes. the Haryana Dam and all these things. Yes. Why it's dead? Because of the pollution, because of the wastage from the factories and yes. all these things. It's dead and government is trying to make some beautiful guards and all these things in Vrindavan but uh, it's like decorating a dead body. No? Mm -hmm. So, what we were, like in previous years we see that the people from Delhi have come here to do ceremonies and all the rituals with the same dirty water filled with white uh, toxic, toxic, fog, toxic yeah. fog and all yeah. these things. No? So, mm -hmm. what would you suggest to government or what would you give an, any idea to the government to make the river alive? Yes. Actually, the, um, there is an international law which says that if a, a river is going through one state to another state, then the, the, um, the previous state cannot take more than 20% of the water and 80% should go to the next state and so on. But we have a situation where uh, Haryana is taking about 90 or 95%. And because of this, before the Yamuna reaches uh, Vrindavan, actually the riverbed dries up. And so not one drop of Yamuna is coming here. Yes. And it's only the industrial waste and the drains and everything, and then it comes here. So actually this is a question of uh, corruption. Mm. So um, I will be speaking on this subject in Delhi at the BRICS forum on the um, 9th of December at the uh, Taj Hotel in Delhi, there's a big forum of BRICS, you know, it means Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. And uh, I will address the politicians from these countries at that forum uh, on this uh, very issue, because uh, not only politicians within India, but also the in those who have international influence should put pressure on the government to enforce the international law if the international law were simply enforced, then the problem with Jamuna would be solved, and uh, 80 another at least 80 percent of the water from the Himalayas, from original Jamuna, there would arrive here. So we're trying to do something to solve uh, this problem. So, like uh, now, it's like the question of uh, religious you know, religion and all these things. Yes. In, the, in many years later, in the previous history, we see that the religions were like union. They were not fighting, and everything was peaceful under the ruling of certain kind of kings and all these things. So, and in order to better understanding of the God or transcendental reality, but nowadays, like unity and brotherhood sound loudly in different social circles. Mm -hmm. and believers and of not believers also. So what do you think that uh, um, scarism or uh, discrimination, discriminatory behavior is correct or wrong? Mm -hmm. First of all, history was, in the past it was not so rosy. The situation in India was much worse when there was the first uh, invasions, uh, Islamic invasions coming from the Middle East and from Afghanistan and there was a war, India was not one country, it was many, many small countries and many of them were completely conquered and for hundreds of years and, and during those hundreds of years of the reign of uh, various uh, Mughal leaders and so on some of them were more liberal, like Akbar was more liberal and a good uh, person you know? uh, but there were others who were very tyrannical as well and uh, more than two, over those centuries, more than 200 million uh, Indian persons were massacred. So it's probably the worst massacre uh, or genocide against the people in the history of the world. It didn't happen all in a few years, it went, happened over several centuries. So great uh, injustice uh, took place here in India. So relatively speaking, compared to those times, things now are actually, they're actually much better. They're much better. Uh, but still, there is conflict and there is always the um, it's a volatile situation, there's always the danger of some situation erupting. And now of course people have much more powerful weapons and nuclear weapons and so on. So the stakes are very high, the danger is extremely high. So uh, it's, it's essential that there's a dialogue between 
the religions. So I've been engaging with the religious leaders from around the world um, uh, to promote this dialogue. And what we are trying to present is uh, the universal spiritual science. That uh, we can agree that there's only one Supreme Lord and all the various persons are worshipping that one God, but in different ways. So what are the things which first unite us? Because people are quarreling over the differences. But if we examine, there's much more which unites the religious traditions and makes them much, much more close with each other than to say the mechanistic, atheistic, materialist and secular world views. So also a point that I've been making in the meetings is that when there's a conflict between the religions, then the general public who have no religious affiliation or faith, uh, they see this as discrediting the very concept of religion itself. And so they become more atheistic and so on. So it's important that uh, religious leaders come together and stand shoulder to shoulder uh, in order to stem the rising tide of materialism. Uh, because while the religions are fighting with each other, actually atheism is spreading everywhere. <laughs> You see? So it's, a, it's, a, it's not productive for anyone. So the things which uh, uh, hold us together is first of all that there's one God who is the creator of everything. That every person, we are not the body, that we are the soul. And the soul has an eternal relationship with God. Um, that uh, when we die, life is not over that the activities in that we do in this life have consequences in the afterlife and everyone will have to face the consequences of their activities. Um, that uh, one should praise and, and worship God. And especially we see all the religions of the world, they have a mala. The Muslims have mala, the Christians have mala, the Buddhists have mala, the Vaishnavas have a mala and they repeat the name of God or whatever is their concept of God and the glories and qualities of God on the mala. So these are um, universal uh, the spiritual <coughs> principles and there's actually a science behind why uh, the repetition of the glories of God uh, purifies us and elevates our consciousness. So um, we are uh, presenting uh, research in the subject and trying to make a common platform for everyone but at the same time though we are endeavoring to make a common platform we're not trying to make a syncretism or to synthesize everything into one new global religion no each tradition has developed in its own way and it's suitable for those who have the samskars the impressions related to their particular stage of development in spiritual life. So, um, we don't want to destroy the individual character or identity of any religion, but only that uh, through dialogue we'll understand that there's a common, uh, universal, spiritual and scientific platform behind principles behind the varied and diverse religious practices. So, um, our own Vaishnavism is a good model for this as well because on the one hand, the foundational principle is bhakti, devotion to God. But we recognize, reconcile, uh, we, sorry, we recognize that Krishna or the Supreme Lord can be served in Dasiras as a servant or in Sakiras as a friend or as a parental love or the Maduras like this. And none of them are wrong. They're all different flavors of expression of love for God. Um, so in this way, there's room for all the religions of the world to reconcile their differences and let their cultures go on and let them flourish and let no one uh, be uh, atheistic and against God. They, they should accept one or another form of religion. You know, when Srila Haritas Thakur, he was born in an Islamic family, but he was chanting the name of Krishna. And when he was arrested and uh, threatened that he should give up his allegiance, his devotion to Krishna, he said, mm, there is only one God and each person is serving and worshipping that God 
in the way that God in his heart is inspiring him to serve him. So we should uh, honor that. If anyone has faith in God, then we bow down to the faith in that person's heart. Because that devotion, you know, Bhakti Devi, that faith in my heart, in your heart, in your heart, is the same person. So that should be respected. And um, it's other thing about a cow. Cows. Cows are our Gomata. It's Sanatana Dharma, the followers of Sanatana Dharma, it's given, the cow is given a highest place because yes. it to be one of our mothers. Yes. So in India, the present situation, we see that uh, cows are being harassed and slaughtered and they don't yes. have a proper care. Whereas in the past of our history, like Nanda Maharaj or whoever it is, yes. they used to take care of cows like like in a very luxurious way. So, and Srila Paramadvaiti Maharaj was also saying that in one of the meetings, he was saying that uh, India is one of the biggest slaughterhouse of cows. Yes, yes, they are doing also export. Yes, export. Export of uh, beef. Perhaps it's the second biggest export after Argentina now. Yes. So, for the followers of Sanatana Dharma, the cow is sacred and yes. for, not for the others and all these things, but what would you like to say for the followers of Sanatana Dharma? The, to protect the cows. <coughs> it is very important always to protect the cows. And it is said that uh, if the cows are pleased, then Gopal Krishna is pleased. Gopalopi Prasirati. So, we have a situation where India is the land of Sanatan Dharma. And uh, the Sanatan Dharma means to protect the cow and uh, honor the cow like one of one's uh, respectable mothers. So that is essential. The problem is that uh, we have secular uh, government, so-called secular democracy in India, which can not favor, favor one religion or another. Hmm? They want equality for everyone. So my question is this, if you want equality, then actually you can see in there is no secular governments in the Islamic co countries. Saudi Arabia is not a secular government. United Arab Emirates is not a secular government. Mm -hmm. They have, a, a, they allow persons of other religions. They can live there, but their law is their own law of their culture. So, in the same way, in India, uh, this is the land of Sanatan Dharma, and the government should support. Uh, guests can be allowed to live here, but they have to follow the rules of this this country and this culture. Mm -hmm. They will, uh, not that they have to wear tilak and all of these things, but uh, the law of Sanatan Dharma is that the cow should be uh, protected. And if anyone is the, uh, wants the uh, privilege to live in the land of Sanatan Dharma, they should be respectful. Because respect goes two ways. It is not only, uh, uh, I have to respect you, but you don't have to respect me. In social dealings, there is a law, and the law is reciprocity, to reciprocate. So, uh, when people properly reciprocate with each other, then there's peace. And conflict comes as when one person is uh, reciprocating, but the other person is not. Yeah? Like this. So, uh, for the uh, true equality, then we should see that uh, in the uh, is, uh, traditionally Islamic countries, uh, they uh, are enforcing their laws there, and the Hindus are not complaining, right? I know hundreds, thousands of Hindus, they're living in Arab Emirates, huh? and they very peacefully follow whatever is the law of, the, of that, that nation. So in the same way, if the Islamic people are staying in India, they should peacefully accept the, the uh, laws and traditions here uh, as, as in, in this regard, in this particular regard. Uh, they should be in a nation, religious freedom, but uh, which is the, the traditional homeland of that particular religion, there should not be anything which disrespects the values of that religion in their homeland. Uh, because this is very unpopular today, this idea, uh, because uh, there are um, movements who are trying to promote globalism. And they actually want, uh, by mixing all the cultures together, they want to destroy the traditional cultures and socially engineer a new completely economic and materialistic and atheistic culture. 
So they are not the, the, the friends. Let's say if an Islamic person said, but I'm living in India and I want to eat the cow or whatever. And they say, yes, yes, it's very bad. Why are they enforcing their law? They should be secular. Uh, and they make propaganda like this in international media. So actually, they are not the friend of that Muslim. They're only using the conflict between people to gradually erode everyone's traditions. Uh, if they're not attacking your tradition today, they're supporting your tradition. But they're only supporting your tradition to erode someone else's tradition. And you'll be next. Mm -hmm. So, in this way, we want to... Uh, uh, that each uh, culture, each tradition, will have their own... Uh, can be... Uh, have their supremacy in the place which is their hist historically um, ruling. And then in the other places, they should honor the traditions of that place. Hmm? So that means the uh, traditionalism, uh, nationalism, and the traditionalism, which is not discriminatory, but it's for everyone. Yes. Let everyone be uh, free to have their nation and their traditions and interact peacefully and respectfully with each other. And so this is, a, uh, this is the will of God, and all the scriptures support this. Hmm? The cultures are natural, Religions are natural and nations are natural and mixing everyone together and uh, then making a legal system Which is actually not supporting anyone but promoting atheism. This is just the demonic influence of Kali Yuga. So the next question for you is like about plastic. You know the mess I want to say the message of the Vedas Swastiastu Viswasa Kala Prasidatam Jayantu Bhutani Shivam Mitodhya it means, may there be auspiciousness for everyone in the world. And even the wicked people, may they also be, become pacified and, and, and peaceful. Mm. And may the Jayantu Bhutani, Shivan Mitodhya, and may everyone think of the welfare of his fellow man. Mm. And how will that come? That will come, Manas Chabhadre, Bajatam, uh, Doxa J. It will come when the minds of the people are pure. And when are the minds of the people pure? When they remember God. Mm. This is the thing. So it all starts with the religious life. That the person who is remembering God and aware of the presence of God in the heart of everyone, then his mind becomes pure. When his mind is pure, he's not selfish. He can think of the welfare of others. And when all think of the welfare of others, then there's a auspiciousness in the whole world and even wicked persons they can be pacified as well so this is the message of the Vedas it is spoken by Prahlad Maharaj in the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam this is our motto auspiciousness for everyone and yes so do you support the idea of stopping plastic usage of plastic things from our Gaudiya temples because you were saying devotion is the basement of everything everything starts from religion like uh, we are using plastic and we are throwing it all over the street and mm -hmm. cows are eating it one way of cow slaughter we saw in other way another way of cow slaughter we ourselves as Sanatana Dharma people we are doing it through this mm -hmm. way no mm -hmm. so and it's also polluting the mother earth and uh, is it uh, we are actually setting a bad example for the people in common by using plastic and all these things. So what do you think? Uh, do you support the order of... Do you support this idea of we should stop plastics in our temple? Either all plastic should be stopped or there should be a recycling system. If there's... Because uh, let's say in, in, in the West uh, every, now, in many countries, they have a very good recycling in California, in Germany and other places. And so, if plastic is used, it should not go just in the environment. Whatever plastic is used <coughs> should go back and be recycled and it's just going around and not making... So, there's zero, as far as possible, zero uh, waste and zero uh, pollution. There's uh, one architect, his name is... Um, mm, uh, William McDonough and he wrote a book it's called Cradle to Cradle the Cradle to Cradle instead generally we think of cradle to grave when something is designed it's created and then it lasts for some time then it becomes trash 
And so he presented a very nice system, cradle to cradle, that everything is designed, should be designed in such a way that it's designed to then be redesigned again and again. So there is zero waste. And uh, he is given this uh, uh, technique for all kinds of things. For example, people have carpets. You know, they have some carpet in their home. And when it gets old, they throw it away. Huh? But he's saying that the companies, the copy companies can make it in such a way that they buy it and when it's old, they just send it back and they send them a new one. And it's going round like this. And there, there are so many solutions. So to stop old plastic bags and things like this, this is very good because they're unnecessary. You can use cloth bags. But it may be that some things may be too inconvenient or too uh, uh, economically, it's not viable economically to abruptly stop it. Because things happen uh, when there is some financial incentive. You know? So if people are de incentivized, you have to stop doing this, and then they find out everyone's going to lose so much money, it will simply not happen. So sometimes you have to make a compromise where, okay, well, let's try to reduce this and let's try to improve, improve this. So ideally, um, I totally agree in principle that no plastic should ever go be thrown into nature and pollute the environment, 100%. But how we achieve that, it may be done by partially banning certain things and by recycling other things. It's very important to uh, take care of Mother Earth. In Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, the Prachetas, they were doing austerities and by their mystic powers they started burning all the forests. And Swayam Bhuva Manu came and said, no, no, don't kill the trees. So in Srimad Bhagavatam, it's very, uh, the recommendation is there, don't destroy the forests. And uh, in the Vedic culture, planting trees is considered to be a great pious act as well because it gives a a habitat for the animals and give shade for pilgrims who are on their journey to the holy places. So uh, protecting the forest and planting trees and keeping the environment clean is uh, one uh, dharmic principle uh, which should be observed by everyone as far as possible because when you pollute the atmosphere then you are the loser because now you have no clean water, you have no clean air and also plastics in the environment uh, uh, they are what is called endocrine disruptors and it means that they, uh, the plastics in the environment interfere with the functioning of human hormones and uh, when human hormones become uh, disrupted by the plastics in the environment then all kinds of strange result come changes in behavior, mentality and uh, health problems as well so it should be avoided at all costs so, I think we are taking too much of time, we will finish with the last one. So, India has recently discovered internet through the smartphones. Mm -hmm. I would like to say not India, like our culture. Mm -hmm. This is a great opportunity for giving news to the Vaishnava leading thinkers to create a network to defend our common cause. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? You know, all of these inventions are double-edged sword, they can cut in both ways. So now there's a big problems all over the world with attention deficit disorder and um, the uh, social media addiction. So it, these things should be regulated uh, or rather people should de develop habits in their life whereby they don't have too much exposure to these things because they're very addictive. And on the other hand it's made communication very inexpensive and you can reach a broad audience. So, uh, if it's uh, utilized in a positive way, then it's very good, but we're seeing mainly it's being used in a negative way, and so many um, pornography, violence, and, uh, and just gossip, and trivial celebrity news and things, like it's uh, dominating the, 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 in, in, yeah, the culture, the social media culture. So, it's good if uh, persons with uh, means invest in spiritual media. Uh, which will, instead of degrading people, it will uplift them. Mm. A devotees uh, should be very careful to uh, reduce their um, time online as well, because it's very addictive and then when you come to chance, your mind can be steady. Uh, I myself personally have no phone 
I don't have a phone. I don't use a phone. This is my phone. It has one number. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare Hare. And this number only calls one person, Krishna. <laughs> and that's the, the only thing that's really important. And um, uh, But it's necessary to make uh, promotions and for preaching. Uh, there's good uh, opportunities to reach people online. But devotees should be very wary of the dangers. Hare Krishna. <coughs> <laughs> answers like we expected something and it was more than we expected. <laughs> I'm very happy to help you. you. You know there was a meeting in the World Vaishnava Association. Yes, yes. And I was I was there, and uh, I was a, I was appointed as an international advisor for World Vaishnava Association. And uh, since then we've had meetings with world leaders and so on, and we're having some big promotions uh, in Delhi coming up and uh, in, uh, with politicians and religious leaders around the world coming up in Delhi in um, December and in um, the January next year and in February in um, South Korea and other places. So um, I'll be sending the report, photographs and video and reports of this. We're just preparing the reports now. How will you send it? Who is it? Well, I'll send to Paramat Vaitiswan. <coughs> I think better we can send to yeah, We will send you the mail or the information okay. where to send. Well, are you managing the Vina Vina website and all of these no. things? No, no, no. We are managing Germany. it's come it comes from Germany and we are managing the WVA. What is our WVA, WVA website? Website, yes. Yes, yes, okay. So I'll 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 send to you and uh, I'll I'll uh, do the WVA, whoever is managing yourselves managing WVA website. And I'll copy Parameter Wait is from me also so he knows about it. And um, and who's in charge of the Vina website? It's Haryam Maharaj now. No, yes. Who? Har Haryam. Yeah, there was. Uh, it's not fixed now. They are not like uh, changing. Uh, okay, the, yeah. I'll send to you, and yeah. you send to them yes. to make sure it goes to as many outlets as possible. Yeah. Okay. So I'm very honored uh, to do some service within this uh, World Vaishnava Association, and uh, we'll, we are trying to make a big exposure to the international community and religious leaders and politicians all over the world of the projects of World Vaishnava Association. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, our, our idea is uh, uh, also try to involve other Vaishnava branches because till now it has been practically Gaudiya Mata Vaishnava Association, mm -hmm. but the idea is Vaishnava Association, World yes. Vaishnava Association, devoted from all the branches from the four Sampradayas. Mm -hmm would be beautiful. We are planning to make a big festival within two years and mm. trying to gather all these Vaishnavas uh, leaders and talk about important things like the Jamuna Okay, University. very good. I, um, I have uh, close uh, friends in Nimbarka Sampradaya okay. and uh, Valap Sampradaya also. Um, I have friendship with all the Sampradayas in Braja, mm -hmm. uh, but I have very close friends in Valap Sampradaya and then in Bakar Sampradaya, and I'll, be, uh, I'll invite them to participate. It will be very nice. Yes, um, yes, these kind of questions also we are planning to go with them and ask them. So if you can get an So, and Prabhu, it's a personal question. Why you call this place to be the Bhajan Kutir of Narayan Maharaj? Oh, because uh, we just had the 16th anniversary of the establishment of this ashram. So perhaps you know, 16 years ago, uh, when the construction of this ashram was completed, then uh, uh, Sila, actually, it, uh, Sri Anand Surup Kela, who constructed this ashram, he constructed, but he didn't have a guru. And I, before construction was ready, I came here and uh, preached to him, and then he came to Srila Raj and took Diksha. So then when the ashram was ready, then he uh, prepared this room for Srila Narayan Maharaj and rooms for his servants and, and his private kitchen and everything here. And uh, Srila Narayan Maharaj came and did the installation of Radha Shama Sundara and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu here. And uh, uh, Kalaji, he gave the ashram to Srila Narayan Maharaj. So then uh, Srila Ram said, no, you keep it. I have accepted it, but you become the caretaker. And uh, when Srila Ram Raj uh, left this world, then Kalaji uh, asked me <coughs> to be the Acharya here in this ashram. So um, Gurudev used to come for the uh, anniversary every year, and sometimes at other times as well, to Anandam, and stay here for five days at a time. And he always stayed in this room. 
he was sleeping here and he had his darshans here. So in uh, Ananda, it's his ashram, he installed the deities and this was his bhajan kutir in Ananda when he was here. So, And this is his bed. These are the same pillows and sheets and everything that he slept on here. Yes. And uh, he used to uh, sleep here and, and, and sit on this bed to meet guests and have darshans in this room as well. So this uh, place is very dear to us and we feel his eternal presence here. Mm -hmm. Первый вопрос, который Грудеву задали преданные из Всемирной Майшнавской Ассоциации, был о переносе мечети из Айотки, потому что сейчас там... Вошли в историю. Да, а потому, потому что сейчас переносят мечеть из Айохи, и это, и это вызывает большие такие вопросы, большое волнение. И вот преданные спрашивали Гурдеву, как мы должны к этому относиться, потому что много мусульманских, мусульман и конфликтов сейчас. И говорит, что когда эту мечеть построили, вот это было много столетий назад, и тогда это сделали наши предки, и тогда, конечно, было очень много таких некрасивых и нехороших событий произошло. Но мы не должны быть как и, да, и это, это естественно, что в мире часто происходит много а, того, за чего мы можем стыдиться. Но мы должны стараться быть все более и более толерантными и терпимыми, и учиться правильно разрешать эти конфликты. А это нормально, если мечеть перенесут, потому что, например, в Мекке или в Медине там не найти храма Шри Кришны или Господа Рамы. То есть нужно понимать культурную, культурный фон каждого, каждой, каждой нации и относиться к этому с уважением, потому что тенденция к глобализации – это, в общем-то, демоническая тенденция, когда все хотят уравнять, все снести. Вот. И это будет очень хорошим уроком на будущее, если мы сможем мирно разрешить эти конфликты сосуществования разных религий. Следующий, то, следующий вопрос был о том, что ему на сейчас очень грязная, и то, что в ней она почти высохла, очень маленький уровень воды. И Гурдев сказал, что так как ему протекает через разные штаты в Индии, то нужно хорошо бы принять закон, чтобы каждый штат мог использовать не более чем 20% воды, потому что один из штатов, например, использует почти там 80 или 90% воды, потому что очень много там заводов, фабрик, они все это используют из Емуны, и дальше она течет уже почти, ну, буквально капли ее дотекают. Но это все вопрос на таком государственном уровне, потому что очень много коррупции здесь. То есть такой вот вопрос надо решить. А, третий вопрос о том, что в Индии су существуют разные религии. В основном это а, индуизм и ислам, конечно. Вот, и а, много профессиональной уже получается страна, и нужно относиться к этому, как относился император Акбар. Если вы знаете, то а, несколько столетий назад был очень-очень такой толерантный и терпимый император. Он был мусульманин, но у него жена была исповедовала индуизм, и она очень... И он разрешил строить, строить индусам храмы, какие они хотят на территории Индии, и был очень толерантен. И мы должны тоже брать пример с этого императора. Вот. И, в принципе, сейчас уже положение лучше, чем было в прошлом, когда была полная нетерпимость, но все равно еще далеко до совершенства. И, мы должны, и нужно наладить в первую очередь вот этот диалог между разными религиозными лидерами, потому что в каждой религии очень много общего, и все конфликты и проблемы происходят только из-за того, что мы смотрим на различия, а не на сходство в каждой религии. А так каждая религия говорит, что Бог един, что мы все души, все связаны с Господом, жизнь вечная, есть последствия наших событий, и нужно поклоняться Господу. То есть каждая религия говорит об этом. И необходимо фокусироваться именно на общих чертах, а не на различиях. И также... 
И также у каждого, в каждой религии всегда есть четкие. Мы должны вот это вот использовать как такое средство примирения. Но при этом мы не пытаемся создать какую-то единую религию, такую универсальную, где все-все-все вместе, там Иисус Христос, Будда, Аллах. То есть мы не пытаемся в Ленигрет создать. Нет. Каждая религия должна развиваться своим собственным путем, и у каждой религии свое лицо. И очень важно сохранять, это, сохранять вот эту вот индивидуальность, потому что Господь из сердца вдохновляет каждого человека идти определенным духовным путем. То есть так же, как, например, например сейчас в вишнавизме как раз это представлено. У нас есть различные расы, дасья, сакха, вацалья, мадхурья. И это Господь из сердца вдохновляет человека следовать тем или другим. И поэтому мы склоняемся перед каждым, в ком есть вера. Потому что это Бхакти Деви в сердце этого человека вдохновляет его так служить Богу. В сердце другого человека та же самая Бхакти Деви вдохновляет служить по-другому. То есть это все единая, одна, одна и та же трансцендентная личность. И мы склоняемся перед другим человеком, чтобы выразить почтение этой трансцендентной Бхакти Деви. Вот. Следующий вопрос был о том, что так как мусульман много на территории Индии, они едят говядину, и так как у них в культуре, в культуре это нормально, и тоже очень много возникает из-за этого разных споров. И следующий вопрос Гурудева был о том, что в Индии живет много мусульман, и они следуют своей собственной традиции, своей, своим правилам, и они едят говядину. И также сейчас из-за глобализации все, многие, многие говорят, что мусульмане имеют полное право следовать своим традициям, то есть убивать, и есть, убивать коров, есть их мясо, но, разумеется, для многих индусов на их земле это вызывает большое негодование. То есть как решить этот вопрос? И Гурдев сказал, что Индия – это место саната над дхармы, вечной дхармы. И мы должны в первую очередь помнить об этом. Если коровы довольны, то гопал доволен. А, и а, мусульмане, да, здесь живут, но нужно понимать, что когда мы живем на какой-то территории, то нужно следовать законам и традициям этой территории а, и а, не привносить что-то свое. Например, индусы очень а, так смиренно принимают многое, многие правила, которые мусульмане а, заставляют их делать, и а, мусульмане могут также от, а, ответить им, то есть с уважением относиться к традициям той страны, где ты находишься, не пытаться везде продавить свою волю, потому что это наша обязанность защищать коров. То есть глобализация, которая говорит, что все равны, каждый может следовать, чему он хочет, она часто, часто привносит такой атеизм и демонический настрой в общество. И даже если, я вижу, даже если мы видим, что кто-то вроде хорошо относится к моей культуре, но ругает другую культуру и выступает против нее, то нужно понимать, что я буду следующим. То есть если человек не толерантен к другим, то не, не будет никаких исключений. То есть каждый попадет под раздачу. Вот. А следующий вопрос был о том, что сейчас... Индия, в особенности Вриндава, но очень сильно загрязнены пластиком. То есть везде куча бутылок, разной грязи, каких-то пакетиков. И коровы это едят, и все это загрязняет окружающую среду, емуну. В общем, ужасная экологическая ситуация сейчас в Индии, во Вриндаване. И что делать? И Гурдев сказал, что... Все? Нормально? Гурдев, Гурдев сказал, что мы можем брать пример в этом плане как раз с Запада, где очень-очень хорошо налажена система переработки отходов. Это называется Zero Waste, ноль отходов. То есть весь пластик, что производят, его нужно отдавать в переработку, чтобы ничто не попадало просто в реку, просто на землю. То есть обязательно все пускать на второй, на третий круг и так далее. Вот. Это перейти, например, с обычных пакетов, с которыми ходим в магазин на плотяные сумки. То есть, ми то есть минимизировать в своей жизни количество вот этих вот одноразовых предметов, особенно пластиковых, которые не разлагаются там сотни лет просто. А, потому что невозможно просто взять и запретить весь пластик. Ну, во-первых, это будет очень-очень неудобно для, для всех практически. Во-вторых, это приносит огромные а, деньги сейчас. И обратная ситуация принесет огромные расходы. Поэтому 
поэтому так не будет. И мы просто должны, может быть, что-то самое опасное правительство должно запретить, а остальное мы должны а, пускать в переработку, потому что это вклад в наше собственное будущее. Если у нас все вокруг загрязненное, а у нас нет чистого воздуха, чистой воды, более того, пластик в почве выделяет какие-то токсичные вещества, которые попадают в пищу, потом это влияет на гормональный фон человека. И мы так свое собственное здоровье рушим сильно. Поэтому нужно обязательно заботиться о природе. И последний вопрос был о том, как относиться а, а, к тому, что масс-медиа сейчас очень распространены у всех смартфоны и в вайшнавском обществе в том числе. А, Гурдев сказал, что у всего есть а, две медали, и любую тех, технологию можно использовать а, в позитивном и в негативном смысле. Конечно, надо, надо все регулировать. То есть те же самые масс-медиа использовать это для там, развития общества преданных, такие как трансляции, киртоны, классы. Не, понятно, что сейчас медиа в основном заполнены там, разной порнографией, сплетнями из жизни звезд, предложениями купить какую-нибудь ерунду. И преданные должны стараться избегать вот этого. И также избегать очень излишней, излишней привязанности к своим э, смартфонам, потому что ум от этого становится очень беспокойным и очень трудно медитировать. А, и Гурдев сам сказал, что у него нет телефона, вообще нет телефона, и сказал, вот это мой телефон, на нем только один номер, и я могу связаться только с одной личностью. Аре, Кришна, Кришна, Аре, Кришна, 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 Аре, Аре. Харе Рама, Харе Рама, 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 Харе, Харе. Ну, говорит, зато я могу связаться с самой важной личностью. Вот. Всем Харе Кришна пыталась пересказать то, что смогла. И Кришна всем мои поклоны.